wanted to provide some evidence of the way that I analyze data for my classes. This is one of my courses um, that I'm, this is just my data analysis from yesterday that I pulled up. As you can see, I've got multiple reports at, that I am keeping track of. So I'm keeping track of their grades for the entire week. So this was, what, Tuesday? Wednesday and there was there was a Monday but I didn't include Monday um, for the whole week because it was Monday was the baseline and then it was like did they make progress so I can tell the students that made progress that day um, that brought their grades up on Monday to Tuesday um, by these ones right here because I color coded them okay this was a student that um, from Monday to Tuesday brought their grade up to passing woohoo um, all those students in that light green color from Monday to Tuesday, that was huge. And then um, Wednesday, Tuesday to Wednesday, we had about, what, four, five, six students. And then Wednesday to Thursday, <clears throat> we had five more students that brought their grades up to passing. So I'd like to keep track of that. I like to also keep track of my failing students, um, see if they're making any movement. Um, that's why I do this daily thing because I can look at their behavior and go, oh, this student is tuning in. I know that there's something going on. I'm not sure why their grade dropped. I probably excused or something, something, but um, I can take a look and see who is active <laughs> and who's not. <laughs> there's a lot of students that are just completely not tuned in. I also have my seniors highlighted so I know who they are. I've got my notes here. You can see all the communication notes. There's been like 20 contacts made out of the 42 students who are failing. 20 of them made contact with me this week. In addition to all of those students um, who brought their grades up to passing, so that's huge. Um, I don't have time to do this every week of the school year, um, unfortunately, because I'm busy making instructional materials for that other part of the data analysis. What are students needing in order to be successful, the ones who are engaged and have questions? And that's where this all comes in. I will take the time. Um, when I can squeeze it into my week to make those instructional videos for students so that everyone, regardless of whether or not they have a 504 plan, and if they do have a 504 plan, I'm on it. I've got it. My students who have a SPED program, I am on it, and I am creating um, the materials that are differentiated that they need in order to be successful. I'm also um, actually making videos of me showing them how to do the projects. I handhold them. Every single project in my classes has an instructional video where I walk them through the process. In my class, I think my, my theme is just click play. But what's nice about having all of these instructional videos is when a student emails me and says, I need help on unit whatever, I can be like, whoop, there you go, just click play. <laughs> so there's my differentiated instruction, there's my response to formative assessments, um, my summative assessments right here, I can see who's not working, and really this is just a matter of getting a hold of these people and if I can get them to click play, I know they're going to be successful. And I'm going to use that uh, data also to create some individualized progress reports. I'm gonna mail these out every single day. I am going to sit and grade everything and at, on every single afternoon after everything's been submitted and graded, I am going to set send out a, another progress report that shows what they've done, what they need to do, I've got this broken down by days of the week so that these students know exactly what they need to do. And then I'm gonna auto dial their learning coach and I'm gonna say, all right, I just sent an updated progress report. Did your student complete the unit test on Monday? Each of those videos is only 30 minutes long and way overdue. So it's really a matter of spending an hour and a half on Monday. Did your student get part one of one of the projects done on Tuesday? Is your student working on part two? So it's really easy. It's, um, it's just a matter of getting that learning coach to plug in. And so I'm very persistent. 
And then I'm also going to uh, do this kind of a thing where I use all that data to show the family, okay, so this is the progress that I've seen in the last two weeks. On February 25th, your student had 30 points. On March 1st, your student still had 30 points. It's March 7th today. Your student still has 30 points. And um, I think I will continue with that, um, as especially as it gets closer to the end of the block deadline. It'll be like on a daily basis. Learning coaches, did your student make any progress today? You know, I'll have this chart here. And I think that this visual is so helpful if you can just get them to open the email. And as a side note, um, speaking of data, um, this was actually a situation with uh, Melanie Denton where um, I had, she had um, sent me an instant message yesterday that said, uh, so-and-so's parent says that you did not provide accommodations in that class for this student. And I had this data right here and I had that student's accommodations because I know, I know who has an IEP in my class, right? Um, and it was from a previous block, but I still had all of my data and I was able to um, prove that I had never once received an email from the learning coach or the student in response to any of my daily <laughs> individualized progress reports with accommodations built right in. Um, and you know that this is way past two weeks overdue that this student hasn't turned their work in and they only have like an extra week on their accommodations. And um, Melanie was just like, thank you so much for having your data. This is exactly what I needed. 